Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, I've kind of been gone for a few weeks. Um, well, St. Patrick's Day happened, and then the following week was my birthday. And then these last, like, two weeks, I think, since then, I've just been bleh, everywhere and all sorts of crazy. So, I'm back. How's everyone doing? Cool, cool. Uh, so, yeah, so today I thought uh give a brief, you know, overview history of uh, rumpled stiltskin and where that tale came from. Let me just uh, let's get into it. Oh, I forgot to mention uh, everything I'm using I'll put in the description box. Alright, so. Alright, so let's begin here with the Legend of Rumpelstiltskin. Uh, it's primarily European heritage and it goes back as early as like the 16th century. Yeah, it's old. Ah, uh, it's this legend has been studied by many, many, many folklorists, uh, notably by uh, Edward Codd, uh, who produced an entire book on Tom Tit Tot, which is the English version of Rumpelstiltskin. Show titled that uh, an essay on savage philosophy and in folktale published in 1885 so this legend is honestly I'm gonna use the word that the internet used this legend is indeed savage it I mean honestly that's literally what they used uh, It, uh, it encompasses some vice-ridden characters, uh, a direct mal maleficent goblin, yeah, and some grizzly endings, honestly. It's, it's weird, man. It's a weird tale. Uh -huh. So this tale, it, uh, it kind of takes its form in, uh, it takes the form of like, a, I think it's, uh, and I wrote it down, word. it's either Ann Thompson or Arnie Thompson type, uh, 500, the name of, quote, the name of the helper, end quote, in nearly every variant plot, uh, it centers around the discovery of the name of a troublesome, not necessarily evil, still troublesome, helper, um, helper assistant, you know, and that's, you know, Rumpelstiltskin, and everything just revolves around discovering his name. Alright, done. And then I, we're gonna run through the tale real quick, which I'm just gonna read directly from this book. So, here we go. Once there was a miller who was poor, but who had a beautiful daughter. Now it happened that he had to go and speak to the king. Uh, in order to make himself appear more important, he said to him, I have a daughter who can spin straw into gold. Uh, the king said to the miller, which pleases me well. That's what he said. That's the king to the miller. Uh, and then he says, uh, quote, If your daughter is as clever as you say, bring her tomorrow to my palace, and I will try to, what she can do. And I... Alright. <clears throat> and when the girl was brought to him, he took her into a room. into a room which was quite full of straw and gave her a spinning wheel and a reel and said, now, s uh, now set to work and if by tomorrow morning early you have s uh, not spun this straw into gold during the night, you must die. Thereupon he himself locked up the room and left her in it alone. That's kind of screwy. 
You don't have to spend the time to go, which is physically impossible. You're going to die because your daddy's a liar. Right. So there's up the poor Miller's daughter. And for the life of her, could not decide what to do. She had no idea how straw could be spun into gold. She grew more and more miserable until the last, or until at last, last she began to weep. That's where, God, I could not seem to find that. Lost my money. Uh -huh. But all at once, the door opened, and in came a little man and said, Good evening, Mistress Miller. Why are you crying so? Alas, answered the girl, I have to spin straw into gold, and I do not know how to do it. What will you give me? said the mannequin, if I do it for you. My necklace, said the girl. The little man took the necklace and so seated himself in front of the wheel, and <laughs> three turns, and the wheel was full. He then put another on, and <laughs> Uh, three times round, and the second was full too. And so it went until by morning, when all the sp straw was spun, and all the reels were full of gold. By daybreak, the king was already there, and when he saw the gold, he was astonished and delighted. But his heart became more greedy. It's not always the way. It's a side note, you know. It seems like one person gets a little bit of money, and then he just wants more and more and more. The king here. He had the miller's daughter taken into another room full of straw, which was larger. And he commanded her to spin that all to spin that also in one night if she valued her life. So hold up. Sorry, just gonna find my eyes here. <clears throat> Alrighty, back to our tale. Step. The girl knew not how to help herself and was crying when the door again opened and the little man appeared and said, what will you give me if I spin that straw into gold for you? The ring on my finger, answered the girl. The little man took the ring again and began to turn the wheel, and by morning had spun all the straw into glittering gold. Fucking men. Things just spot them up here, aren't they? Alright. The king rejoiced beyond measure. At the sight, but he still he had not enough. He had not gold enough. Great old bitch. Don't worry about all my little side notes, cause like, honestly though, he is greedy. Alright. So, he had the miller's daughter taken into a large room full of straw and said, You must spin this too, in the course of the night, of this night, but if if you succeed, you shall be my wife. Fucking weirdos. Come on, man. Just leave the damn girl alone. But that's not how this works. Okay. So. Even if she be a minister, I just thought he, I could not find a richer wife in the whole world. Still greedy, isn't he? Just super greedy. When the girl was alone, and the mannequin came again for the third time and said, What will you give me if I spin this straw for you this time also? I have nothing left. If you should, I have nothing left that I could give, answered the girl. To which he replies, Then promise me, if you should become queen, your first child. But that would have and thought the miller's daughter, not knowing how else to help herself in this strait, she promised the mannequin 
what he wanted, and for that, he once more spun the straw into gold. That's not the end. When the king came in the morning and found all she, he had wished, he took her in marriage, and the pretty miller's daughter became a queen. A year after, she had a beautiful child, and she never gave a thought to the mannequin. But suddenly, he came into her room and said, Now give me what you promised. The queen was horse-struck and offered the mannequin all the riches of the kingdom if he would leave her the child. The mannequin said, No one thing that is living is dearer to me than, the tre than all the treasures in the world. Then the queen began to weep and cry so that the mannequin pitied her. I will give you three days' time, he said. And if by that time you find out my name, then I, then shall you keep your child. So the queen thought the whole night of all the names she had ever heard and sent a messenger over the country to inquire far and wide for any other names that there might be. When the mannequin came the next day, she began with Castle Melchior, Melchior, Balthazar, and said all the names she knew one after another. To every one, the little man said, That is not my name. On the second day, she had inquiries made to the, in the neighborhood as to the names of the people there, and she repeated to the mannequin the most uncommon and curious. Perhaps your name is Short Ribs, or Sheepshanks, or Lace Log. But he always answered, That is not my name. On the third day, the messenger came back again and said, I have not been able to find a single name. But as I came to a high mountain at the end of the forest where a fox and a hare bid each other good night, there I saw a little house, and before the house was a fire burning. And round about that the fire, quite a ridiculous little man jumping. He hopped upon one leg and shouted, Today I bake, tomorrow I brew, the next I'll have the young queen's child. Ha! Glam am I that I take no one new. Oh, glam am I that no one knew, sorry, that Rumpelstiltskid I am styled. You may think how glad the queen was when she heard the name, and when soon afterwards the little man came and asked, Now, yeah, mistress, now, yeah, mistress queen, what is my name? And at first she said, Is your name Conrad? No, is your name Harry? No. Perhaps your name is Rumpelstiltskin. The devil has told you that. The devil has told you that, he cried, cried the little man. And in his anger, he plunged right, plunged his right so, little, plunged his right foot so deep into the earth that his whole leg went in. And then in rage, he pulled out his left leg so hard with both hands that he tore himself in two. I caught on you. So that's the actual tale that's in it was written by the Grimm brothers. Like, it's freaking bananas, yo. Alright, I'm gonna do my eyebrows real quick. Uh, so now, that you've got that bit of history, the original tale, you know? That's not what I was reaching for. Not yet. Shoo. The, uh, this same story, uh, its pattern appears in numerous other cultures, like Whippity Story, uh, oh, excuse me, Whippity Story in Scotland, Gilitrit in Iceland, Joadane in Arabic, it means uh, he who talks too much, I guess. Uh, oh god. Kramushka, I think I pronounced that right, but please don't hit me if I didn't. Uh, that's Russian. My light's weird today. Uh, and Ludoquido, Quidido, in South America. It's a little noise. I don't know how to actually pronounce it. Version pinned by the Brothers Grimm. Story. Uh, you know, that's Rumpelstiltskin, and it was collected in 1812 in their edition of Grimm's Kinder und Hausenmarten. I 
pretty sure I pronounced it wrong. I'm sorry, Germany. Uh, it's Children's and Household Tales. Uh, it's a narrative so well known across Europe. The Grimm's collected four variations, which they combined into the plot best recognized today, which is the one I just read. Which, bananas. I know. So, the name, though, Rubble Stiltskin, is thought to have derived from an old children's game named Rumpel Stilt Order der Bubber, which is mentioned in Johann Fischart's. Oh god, let me try and pronounce this word here. Okay, I can't pronounce the full word, but it's also referred to as Gargantua. So Fischart was a German satirist and publicist, and his game was 363rd uh, Amusement. This, this game was. 363rd Amusement in his book. Uh, this game is, you know, still played in some parts of Germany. And, you know, von Pellen, von Pellen was meant to make noise and stills are referring to someone with a limp. The archaic German word stuhls means lame or with a limp. So, there's that. He's lame. So when the silk skin was uh, conceived as a, as a noisy goblin with a limp, which directly translates to little rattle stilt. Fun fact there. Oh, this camera's gonna be so pretty. I barely know what I'm doing today. Okay, so. So in this game, the children take turns to assume the role of the marauding goblin, also called pop art or pop heart, I'm not sure. Uh, and it makes a noise, and they make a noise by rattling pots and wrapping on planks. And the meaning is similar to Rumpelgeist, rattle ghost or poltergeist, mischievous spirit that clatters. And you know, looks household objects. Hold on. Just a minute. Uh, although this is the first mention, Fischert's book was a loose adaptation of an earlier tome from Frenchman Francois Rebellius. Sorry, France, I don't know how to pronounce that name either. Uh, both men were skilled satirists and humorists and took delight in manipulating and inventing uh, worlds and words and phrases, rebellious work, The Life of Gargantua, and The Life of Gargantua and Pentagrill, told the adventures of two giants uh, featuring crudity, violence, and scatological humor. The elements Bishar found amusing. Uh, the very beginning helps to kind of explain the format we know today, uh, but, you know, no beautiful princesses being recognized, being rescued, uh, but by knights on horses. Instead, it revolves around a young woman, often depicted as lazy and ungrateful. Nice, right? Uh, married to a king through dishonest means, you know, the father lying. Uh, and the self-seeking goblin character that provides dubious aid you know, the tale of the valiant little tailor features a similarly self-seeking protagonist. The names are of great significance in this folklore. Uh, the only character that usually has a name, though, is Rumpelstiltskin. Tom Tittot in Joseph Jacobs' variant, Whoopity Story, uh, for Robert Chambers, Kinkak. Matinko in the Slavic tale, or Tiddly Tor in the Swedish. It goes on and on and on with all these different variations. Eventually, I'll get around to finishing another high side note. Uh, but only when the girl discovers the little man's name does she have power over him. So, Rumpelstiltskin could also suggest a darker theme. You know, little rattle still taking a phallic interpretation. An impish creature makes gold with 
the girl each night than demands her firstborn. Maybe his to take. That's kind of, it might be actually his to take. Hold on. Gotta make sure the other way. Let's keep going here. So the story could also be interpreted as a woman's tale. You know, forewarning about what married life could be like for young, uneducated, and easily manipulated females. Only when the girl knows what to call the visiting imp, and thus gaining masculine knowledge, that she's able to control her own fate. The Mongolian dirt did it. Blah, 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 blah. Mongolian version. Uh, the use of magic language. It's the only one that, the only version of this tale to feature a male lead. Uh, the prince is explicitly sent on a quest to gain knowledge before he meets his untimely end. Uh, yeah, he gets killed. Uh, and such elements also suggest. Uh, Shadow, a shadow animus type narrative, uh, which is a coming of age tale where a young protagonist is trapped, quote, trapped until they grow into maturity by rebelling against their elders. Uh, quote unquote, trapped. Uh, the young girl, as most often portrayed, has been betrayed three times by those in positions of trust, you know, her parents. Her husband and the Rumble Stilton character. Three is a highly significant number here. It's a representative of the Holy Trinity, I guess. There's uh, three fairies in Giambattista's Basile's Italian variant, three nights of spinning, three gifts the woman must give in the Grimm's tale, you know, the ring, the necklace, and the child. Um, three guesses allowed in Tom Titta, in the English, you know. And three days in captivity in the Slavic tale of Kinkak Machinko. So, as well as that, there's also the changing of the antagonist and different versions from everywhere from present to the basic narrative in strikingly imaginative ways. Need mascara. Need feel pretty. Oh, wait, eyeliner, eyeliner. Feel that eyeliner. Mm -hmm. I should have put it. Right. So, Basile, a Neapolitan uh, poet and courtier, uh, he published his, full, his first full length printed version in uh, this Pentamoro. I think that's how it's pronounced. I, Honestly, I don't know anymore. Shoe. Uh, so, well, substantially different from the Grimm's Tale. Basile did introduce uh, the main features of the narrative. Uh, the lie about the young, girl's ability, the young girl's ability to spin her flax her subsequent marriage to a wealthy yet demanding husband, and the aid of the helper. This time, fairies, not a nip. Right. Basile's version uh, is the only one to not have a name guessing game. That's it's different, you know. Super different. So the Swedish version, though, it presents the character Tiddly here as an ugly and deformed man. Alright. Ugly and deformed. To the story at hand. Okay. So the Swedish version, ugly and deformed man. The later described as a dwarf. 
little person. But it's deformed and I guess ugly. What you gonna do, man? So, this change is uh, significant and most likely mistranslation, as in the original German, the Grimm's referred to Rumpelstiltskin as Manlein, which means little man, as opposed to the word Swersch. I'm sorry, Jeremy, I'm probably mispronouncing everything, which means dwarf. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Now we're back into this. I'm just going back into this one, things, you know? It's been a couple weeks. Two. Alright, so traditional fairy tales, dwarves are largely irrelevant. Just irrelevant beings with little to no magical powers. On the other hand, manlines are more associated with um, goodness. For example, in the Grimm's Tale, three man lines in the woods, the wise and knowledgeable creatures help the young girl to marry the prince. That's probably like Sleeping Beauty or something like that. Weird. Alright. Hmm. Although he doesn't seem good though, Robert Seltzkin is incredibly knowledgeable at being able to spin the gold the young woman requires. Uh, spinning was obvious connotations with the, with fate and the three fates which if you don't know is i think it's greek mythology i'm not exactly sure which uh, there's you know the three fates and they have a gold string and when your life is over they cut your string I, if i remember correctly i could be wrong i also did just get a book on greek mythology so i'm gonna be looking into that one Mm -hmm. That'd be fun. Alright. Alright. So that's the activity which is used to control people's destiny. Yeah, back to, we're going back to the gold string there. Uh, so if Rumble Stillskin is as wise and powerful as the imagery suggests, why does he then give the young woman a chance to escape her fateful promise and keep her child? Hmm? Rumble Stillskin could be portrayed as you know, a devil. Or double eye character trying to tempt the woman into the sin of giving up her baby, but offering her a chance at redemption, quote unquote. Uh, his behavior hints to double sided temperaments of men lines. Yeah. Fairies, imps, and the like, with both good and bad elements to their character. At the end of the Grimm's Tale, eh, not any others, because, you know, the Grimm's were kind of sadistic, let's be honest here. Uh, right, so at the end of the Grimm's Fairy Tales and no other ones, Rob Sills can rip himself in half. Uh, thus revealing his dual nature. There are no overt morals to the tale. It could be read as a warning against making promises you can't keep, or a warning against bragging, idleness, or lies, or possibly even a cautionary tale that uh, that transforming, you know, straw to gold, girl to queen, doesn't come free. But just like any other great tale, that is left to the reader and your interpretation. So, yeah, that's the crazy tale. Um, I hope you guys liked this video. I know it was kind of all over the place and a little weird. I'm trying new things, you know. Plus, I've been gone for probably about a month now. And, and now I'm just rushing through all this on a Thursday and I gotta work in the morning. So, gonna get it up as soon as I can. Anyway, uh, I will see you guys hopefully next week, but if I don't get to you next week, just know I'm coming. I'll, I'll be there eventually. And yeah, have a good day everybody. Bye!